Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this video, I'm sort of going to be experimenting or playing around with, depending on what you want to call it, DDR5 memory. I have sitting here on the bench my latest build, the motherboard, the power supply that's going to go along with it. It's connected up to the internet, everything. The only thing that's different is it doesn't have the cooling solution it'll have when it goes in the case. Right now I have a 360 AIO attached to it temporarily just to make sure I can run it without the CPU overheating. Once I have it all said and done and it's all configured the way I want with the proper amount of storage, the proper amount of memory and other configuration parameters I want, then I'll put it in its case and I'll do its custom water cooling build. Okay, now that's yet to come. I want to get past this already before we do that, however. So what I have in front of me are uh, three kits of memory. I have two of these 64 gig kits from G-Skill. Now they're running at 5,600 mega transfers. So there's two sticks of 32 gig each. And then it was on sale. So I went ahead and bought a second kit exactly the same. Also 64 gig, two times 32. And it's also 5600. But I heard that when you put four sticks of um, DDR5 memory into a PC, even though it physically supports it, the timing and cross connections between the various DIMM modules do not work well at all. And if you get it to work, then it's going to be running at a much lower speed. So what I did is recently got a nice price on this third kit. This kit here is a 96 gigabyte kit, which means it has two sticks of 48 gigabytes each, total of 96. Now that wouldn't be as much as the 128 I would get with these other two kits added, but 96 is pretty good. And if I can get the faster speeds out of it, because this kit, not only is larger, but it also runs faster at 6400 mega transfers. So then I would have a, a much better package in my system for my future super creator build. So let me go ahead and try this. Now, one thing I want to start off by saying, I'm not going to play with any of the frequencies, timing parameters, anything else. These will be out of the box. So whatever this winds up getting uh, measured at, when the memory gets trained after booting these, this PC up, that's what we'll go with. And I'll show you what's in the BIOS in each of the configurations. And then we'll chart it all and I'll make a decision how I want this thing to go going forward. Do I want to have just 64? That's unlikely. Do I want to try and hopefully get 128, but at a lot slower speed? Maybe. Or do I want to go for the 96 at a much faster speed, assuming that that's what happens? So we won't know any of this until I actually try each of these combinations out and see what the difference is. So how about we get started, okay? Okay, now I've cleared the CMOS just to make sure we start fresh. So let me go ahead and start it up and see what we get. Pay, pay attention to these lights. Yellow usually means that it's in the middle of trying to size the memory, training it. Let's see how long this takes. Oh, white light, that's good. There's the beep. I'll go into the... Okay, so since I cleared the CMOS, it's now asking me to hit F1 in order to uh, go back into the BIOS, so I'll do that. Okay, so we got 4800 megahertz. That's the base frequency of this memory. I do not have XMP on. So the next thing I will do is I will change this so that it does have XMP enabled. I will do a save and exit, and we'll see what happens with that. XMP does change the frequency and some of the timing. So let's say OK to that. Now it's going to start over again. Red. Yellow. Amber, yellow. It's training the memory. See how long this takes. XMP usually takes a little bit longer. Good. Good. White. Very good. Oh, it's going to start over again training. So I guess that first attempt did not work. Starting again. This happens quite often. 
should expect it when it's training the first time. With a clear CMOS, that's effectively what it's doing. Now we got it, so I can go into the BIOS. Oh, and we went right in this time. Even though the base memory happens to be 4,800 megahertz, with the XMP, it's running at the maximum speed this memory supports of 5,600 megahertz. So that jumped considerably up to the maximum speed that that memory supports. Okay, so let me close this up and we'll do the next combination. Okay, now let me put in the next two 32 gig DIMMs to bring this PC up to 128. So I'll start with this back one here. Two clicks, we're good. And then I'll go to the front one. Two clicks and we're good. Okay, now let's power this thing on. Let me clear the BIOS first. So I have the power turned off. I have the power supply turned off. And then I'm gonna short out the clear BIOS pins, which are right over here. I'm using this uh, tool. I'll hold it for three or four seconds in there, connecting the two pins together, and then we're done. So the BIOS should be cleared at this point. You could also, if you wanted to, remove the battery, the BIOS battery, that uh, it is there. Okay, I'm turning the power supply on, and now I'll power the thing back on again. Watch the lights over here, okay? It's right now in yellow, which means it's sizing and training the memory. Yellow or amber, depending on how you want to look at it. Capturing the screen, 128 gigabytes of memory. It's going to take a little bit longer. Oh, it went off. White light, that's pretty good. If green is next and a beep, we're good. Yep, we are good. Let me get into the BIOS. Well, it automatically is asking me to go into the BIOS anyway. So I gotta hit F1. Let's see what we got. Okay, well, it's got the 4,800 megahertz speed and it's only using 3,600 megahertz of that. So it's way down. Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna go ahead and enable XMP and see what happens. I don't expect that to work, but I'll try it. And then I'll do a save and exit, and we'll see what happens then. Here are the changes in timing it's going to make. Chances are it won't, uh, it won't work, but we'll see. Here we go. It's automatically rebooting. Red light. I expect to see the red light more than once. I expect it to try multiple attempts at uh, training the memory. Let's see what we get. If this does not work, I will clear the BIOS again and then um, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we come back up, same speed. It won't be lower, that is. It'd be nice if it's higher, but more likely it'll be the same or lower. Still training. If it freezes up, I may have to just uh, power off or reset and see what happens next. It's possible it could freeze up. Red again, so it's starting over again. Back to training. It goes through two cycles with nothing, chances are it's not going to work. I'm 
I'm leaving this particular part of it in real time for you so you can get a feel of how whoop, red again so it's starting again okay after the third time I'll give up but we'll see it's in the third attempt at this point Right again, it's going to a fourth time. This is not working, so uh, at this point I'll try to reset it. Okay, I just powered off, I forced it off. So that attempt uh, didn't work. Let me go ahead and reset the BIOS and try again. Okay, I reset the BIOS, I'm gonna power it back on again. First the power supply, and then the PC itself. Let's see what happens now. It should be the same as the attempt we did before. No XMP, it'll probably be at 136. Well, the 3600 megahertz it is. That's good, white. It beeped. It automatically went into requesting me to hit F1 to go into the BIOS, so I'll do that. Should be the same. Yeah, it's at 3600 megahertz. So we're actually losing quite a bit from that 5600 megahertz uh, mega transfers, that is, by um, putting four DIMMs in there. So that sort of proves the point. Let me go ahead now and take these out and uh, we can start by going to the 96 gigabytes. Okay, I've already cleared the BIOS, and now I'll put in these 48 gigabyte DIMMs. Two of them, so we should have a total of 96 gigabytes when we're all said and done. Two clicks. The other one. There we go. So now it's in. Go ahead and try powering this on now. Okay, the BIOS CMOS has been cleared. And let me power this on. First the power supply and then the PC. And we'll see what we get. Again, keep your eye on the lights over here. It is RGB, this particular kit that I got. It's training. Oh, it's off. No red. White, that's good. Beep, that's good. Let me hit, although I think it'll automatically prompt me. Yes, it does. So I will hit F1 and let's see what we get. Okay, we're up to 4,000 megahertz at, now this is sort of a misidentification here. It says that the two DIMMs are only 5,600 megahertz. Hmm, let's see what happens when I turn XMP on. See what we get here. And we'll try over again. Let's enable XMP and let's save it and exit and see what we get. Those are the retiming of memory. Okay, it's training. This may take more than one attempt, but you never know. It 
Okay, there it goes for a second attempt. Oh, white. Oh, let me hit it. Go into the BIOS. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's great. Now it still shows the dim status as only 5600 megahertz, but it did size out to memory, and that's in the information section right above that at 6400 megahertz. So it looks like we're good. Let me save and exit. I didn't make any changes. It's okay. Let's see if it comes up into Windows. Oh, there's the Windows wheel, Windows 10 wheel. Let's see what we get. Hey, that's a good sign right there. Log in. Let me uh, try running. Uh, I'm not going to run anything strenuous. I just want to make sure that it's sized out okay according to Windows as well. So I'll run CPU Z, 64 bit. Let's see if I go to memory, what does it show? 9600. Doesn't show the speed here. Okay, I think we're good. It was uh, 6,400 megahertz back in the BIOS, so I'll go with that. Maybe in a future video, if people are interested, I can maybe run some memory test to see that it performs that well. I'm not going to revert back to the other ones if this stays steady, because this will probably be the way that it'll go in as a final system. Okay, well, anyway, that concludes this, and uh, I thank everybody for watching, and stay tuned for the follow-up videos where I start putting this PC into the case, and then right after that, putting its custom water cooling system together. Thanks again. Take care.